Seems like forever since we've been together. Welcome to the channel. It's day five and we've made it as far as Montfort, not far from the Pyrenees. We stayed overnight in a lovely hideaway air and now are about to head off to saint jean pied de port the famous gateway into Spain along the French way of the Camino, over the Pyrenees. We'll start day five with a quick look around Monfort's camping car air, and then, once we get parked up, take a stroll around saint jean pied de port Don't forget, the what three words coordinates for all the locations we visit are in the description notes below each video. So, if you want, you can explore the locations yourself online or use them as a handy reference if you ever plan to visit these places in your own camper. This is my card here that cost five euros. Drive up to the barrier, you take your card, hold it up over the keyboard and the gate just opens. It really is that simple. And when you're leaving, it's the exact same process. You need to get your fresh water here got to put water for your, you know, turn it on, turn it off, obviously. That's right, have a few adapters with you. And uh, you can dispose your toilet cassette here then and rinse it down. So it's a pretty neat kind of setup, actually. A really nice spot, I have to say. And uh, I'm very, very pleased with it. Every pitch has full services. So as you can see, it's just very, very pretty. And it's overlooking the river here. It's very, very quiet, dead quiet. It was dead quiet last night. Now we're still rather tired, but we slept pretty well. So it's up there is where I was with the, um, when I was doing my training, my T25. Now you can see that the road down to this particular camping car park is actually quite narrow. You don't want to meet another motorhome coming the opposite direction. With the Once you have your camping card, what you can do then is you'll have an online account and you can just top it up like, you know, a telephone prepaid card if you want. For example, if you put 20 euros into your account, that's going to stay there until you use it up. It says first European network of motorhome airs and stopovers. So as you can see, the road down to the camping car park at Montford is quite narrow. So what you need to do is when you turn off and head down this little narrow laneway, you have to say a prayer to the motorhome gods that another motorhome won't come in the opposite direction. Otherwise there'll be a little bit of a Mexican standoff. There's a little lay-by there. You can always send someone ahead of you either coming in or going out just to make sure or just to avoid that situation when we drove down here last night we weren't sure are we actually in the right place but you know just to the left then we just spotted a few motorhomes campers and said oh yeah okay it's the right place so so if you come down this laneway you're in the right place saint jean pied de port owes its name to its geographical location at the foot of the ports are passes of the Pyrenees. It has always been an important staging post on one of Europe's oldest routes between France and Spain. When you come to saint jean pied de port you will instantly notice the ever-present seashell symbols and guest house signs for pilgrims. The emblematic citadel fortress has watched over saint jean pied de port since the 17th century. Built in 1628 by the knight Antoine de Ville, it has sheltered military garrisons for centuries to counter attacks from Spanish neighbours. The citadel now houses the village school and is unfortunately not open to the public.
So over here, just where the sports center is, that's where we've parked the van. So it costs 10.50 a night and uh, with services. We got here around half 12. It's 24th, it's today 24th of April. 23rd, Monday, yeah. So we got here at half 12 and it was about one third full. And uh, I think there's another air as well, somewhere in the town, but I'm not sure where that one is. This is the one we chose. Pilgrims came from all over Europe to worship at the tomb of the Apostle St. James at the furthermost tip of Galicia in northwest Spain. These ways converge at the village of Astabad to form a single route onto saint jean pied de port the last stage before the daunting climb over the Pyrenees. It's quite high up, isn't it? In the 12th century, Almeray Picot, in the Pilgrim's Guide, wrote, It's 8,000 miles high and as much down. From the Ronde Savoie Pass, the followers of St. James still had some 800 kilometers to cover before reaching Santiago de Compostela. I won't need to do a workout today. I saw some reviews online and it seemed to indicate that the other air was on kind of slopey ground with that one. If it's the same one, this one doesn't look too bad. Let's have a look. What a nice wooden bridge. Oh, this town is just so charming. Yeah, so this could be the other air. There are some tents there as well. Yeah, I can see it slightly sloping towards me. Like where we're staying is quite flat. It's concrete. But the facilities here seem a lot better, you know. But you can clearly see now a slope. You see the way it's mm -hmm. kind of sloping down, but... On our life journey, we can sometimes burn bridges that we later come to regret or maybe just get a bit lost along the way. The good news, however, is that whenever we want, we can always find a quiet place, look up and make a fresh start with a little help from above. The medieval pilgrim wore a tunic of coarse fabric, a long garment for women and men wore a shorter one. A hood covered their shoulders and a wide-rimmed felt hat protected their heads. A pilgrim's coat appeared in the 15th century. Other essential accessories included a stave, a pouch, a certificate box, a gourd for carrying water and of course on the return journey the traditional seashell picked up on the shores of Galicia. In the registration office, pilgrims can get their Camino passports stamped at each step along the journey. There, we met Cathy, an Irish lady volunteer working in the office who had walked many of the Camino routes alone, she told us, and was about to embark on yet another journey. So 
So just to get an example of the house prices here, this one here, 390,000 euro, 242 square meters, four bedrooms, two bathrooms, and look over here, 234 square meters, two bathrooms, three bedrooms, 234 square meters is actually very, very large, 350,000 euro. If you try to buy something like that in Ireland, I guarantee you, you're talking at least 700,000 euro. And look how beautiful that is. This can be a little bit confusing. There's a sign here in French and it would give the impression if you weren't a French speaker that this is for toilet cassettes but it's actually not. It's actually, it says, you know, rinsing of uh, toilet cassettes essentially forbidden. The hint is in the sign. So this is for fresh water. It says here, fresh water essentially. I saw, uh, there was a German guy today came over and he was starting to dump his toilet cassette in here. And if you actually look back from a distance, it does almost look like a toilet. So uh, I went over and had a chat with him. He actually didn't know, it's, it's really easy to be confused. Uh, you just assume, you just see the word cassette there and assume it's for the uh, toilet. But then over here is the toilet area. That's for rinsing out your cassette there. Look, WC. Then you follow the line, the arrow points to the line. And it goes to here, so you pull up that drain there and dump your toilet cassette down there. And this section here is obviously for your wastewater. So it's actually a little bit confusing. I think they should they should really have it in multiple languages. I'm pretty sure that German guy isn't the only guy who made that mistake. I'd say it's a common error. So uh, it's never a good thing when people are dumping their toilet cassettes in the fresh water or near the fresh water tap, you know. So don't make that mistake if you ever come here. There's plenty of space. You can see 10 euros 50. So it's not that expensive. It includes electricity and the services as I've just shown you. And it's just kind of under the citadel it is up there. And the old town area is kind of up there. So you can just pay by credit card here on the right or by debit card. It didn't have a lot of um, electricity available some years ago, but I think they've really improved that. So on each of the terminals now, I think they have about six uh, electric points. Let's just have a look there. It's got six electric points, which is pretty good. Now compared to the other one, the other one is kind of more natural in that it's got a more of a, um, a natural setting. Uh, it's right there up against the hill. That's actually all the way over there, but it is on a slope. So keep that in mind. And I think it is more expensive. Saint Jean Pied de Poor is actually very, very charming. Highly recommend it if you're coming here. It's well worth staying for a day, having a stroll around maybe do a short hike in the hills if you're into that sort of thing. We were planning on doing that, but we're not doing it now at all. We're just gonna move on towards Pamplona uh, first thing tomorrow morning. Now, apparently I've been told that if I don't get up at six in the morning, then we're staying here and we're doing a big hike. So that's a big motivation for me to get up early and avoid the hike and just go to, to Pamplona. So that's what we're gonna do. And this little park up our air is just really good as well. So. Uh, 10.50 for the night, well worth it, pretty secure in so far as you can just leave your van here and go for a stroll around for, for the day. So overall, this is a great little town, really charming, I'm just so glad that I came here and I uh, look forward to actually even coming back again at some stage in the future, so I highly recommend it. So yeah, uh, that's it, over and out. Home sweet home. Thanks for watching. Do leave a comment, like the video, and subscribe to the channel. And do come back for day six when we head over the Pyrenees and down to the amazing city of Pamplona.